What's up, YouTube? Welcome to the Aviators channel. So I'm going to apologize in advance. This is going to be kind of a long video, but it's going to be answering questions um, that I get all the time. I don't know what it is about my channel, but I tend to not get a lot of comments, but get a lot of emails, like dozens, and that's cool. I'm totally cool with it. I'm not so great at answering them, but I'm, I'm cool with getting them. Um, and the biggest question I get is the cost of aircraft ownership. Airplanes are expensive, period. I mean, you're going to spend a heap of money that you, you know, hopefully you saved it. And the other, the other thing is, is, you know, buying an airplane is probably the cheapest part of flying. It's the maintenance, it's the fuel, it's all that other stuff that you just don't think about. You get fall in love with the idea of owning an airplane and, and you go buy one and then it sits in a hangar because you can't afford to fly it, you can't afford to, afford to maintain it, you can't afford to do all the things you dreamed about doing with the airplane. Unfortunately, here we're pretty fortunate. We uh, kind of do what we want, but that's not always the case. So I get a lot of questions about like, well, you know, I want to buy a Cessna 150. What do you think? And I'm always like, do it. Yeah, yeah. There are very few airplanes that I'm going to tell you not to buy. Um, I like all airplanes. In fact, <clears throat> I was going through my logbook. This has probably been about a month ago and looked at all the different types of airplanes I flew. I've flown like Cessna 140s, 170s, 172s, 180s, 182s, 185s, you know, all the Piper varieties, uh, some, some Warbirds, some Jets, some, you know, turboprops. And it was like 42 different types. And there was only one of those airplanes that I flew that I really didn't enjoy. And it was uh, Jabiru, of all things. It, the rudder, eh, long story. But anyways, um, you know, so when somebody reaches out to me and says, okay, well, well, I want to buy a 150 and I'm like, cool, do it. You know, there are very few airplanes that when you buy them can't be made airworthy. It just takes money. And so when you buy an airplane, that's the first thing you should do is have a really thorough inspection done and, and, you know, build a budget around what it's going to cost to make it what you want. Uh, the other question I would ask back, if you're telling me you want to buy an airplane is what's your mission, right? They talk about that in pilot training. What's your mission? Are you, you know, is your goal to go fly and get a burger on, on the weekend or is it to fly cross country? Well, if you're going to fly cross country, a Cessna 150 probably isn't going to be a good airplane for you. If you're going to, you know, take more than one other person with you with a heavy load, a Cessna 150 is not a great airplane for that. They're great for all sorts of other things, but just not that. So what's your mission? That's what you should ask. Okay, in my case, my mission has changed over the years. You know, I, my very first airplane that I owned, or I owned a, a fifth of it, was a, a Beach Staggerwing. And I absolutely love the airplane, but I only lasted a year in the partnership because it was a partnership, you know? So that's the other question you have to ask yourself is, okay, well, if I can't own all of an airplane, I can't afford to maintain it, I'll get a group of guys and, and we'll go buy an airplane and, and we'll share it and we'll share the expenses. And in theory, it sounds like a really good thing. For me, it just didn't work because I'm way too OCD to, you know, let partners tell me what they are or aren't gonna do. For me, it just wasn't a good situation. And, and so I, you know, sold my share to the other members and um, then I bought them all. Uh, and I thought I wanted them all and I did want them all because it was a great backcountry performer. And, um, you know, then as I started traveling a lot for work, you know, I wanted to use my own airplane and a mall just isn't a good cross country platform, you know, to fly six, 700 miles away every single week back and forth. And so I sold them all, bought a Bonanza. My mission had changed. I wanted a, you know, an airplane that was a great cross country performer. And when I was looking for that airplane, I narrowed it down to a Bonanza or a Cirrus. And both are outstanding airplanes, obviously. Uh, but it was the insurance cost for the Cirrus that, that caused me to pick up my V35B. Love the plane. I put 4,000 hours on it and two engines and all new synthetic vision. I made it the way I wanted it. 
flew that airplane everywhere uh, for for probably six seven years and uh, flew it you know eight to twelve hours a week so it wasn't like I wasn't you know flying a lot and it met my mission perfectly well then I stopped traveling and all of a sudden you know the bonanza just sat you know I, it wasn't much fun to go fly at 20 minutes to you know grab a burger or whatever uh, and I began flying my RV a lot more now RV why did I buy an RV well I wanted to teach my kids how to fly great training platform great airplane cheap to operate fast uh, acrobatic if they ever wanted to do something like that you know so the RV still have it still love it fly it all the time uh, and so as my mission continued to evolve you know my my bonanza was sitting in the uh, sitting in my hangar and and not being used and I really got the itch to start backcountry flying again so I built this um, and there are a bunch of videos on on this I won't bore you with that but bottom line is you know now my mission has gotten a lot simpler you know if I want to fly cross-country it's typically just me and another person or me by myself the RV is spectacular for that I can get there just as fast as I could in the Bonanza you know if I want to fly backcountry I can load this thing up and go land 95% of you know where where a Super Cub could land um, and so incidentally it's funny people tease me about this airplane you know why would you spend all that time and money on a uh, on a uh, on a nose dragger you should be flying a tail wheel listen I, it's a religion thing I love tail draggers I've got thousands of hours of tail dragger time love them love them but I don't have to worry about wind I don't have to worry about any of that kind of stuff this thing will go into 99 percent of the places I'm gonna go into you know I'm not gonna be you know bouncing on big rocks and, and doing all that stuff so that's kind of that so that's the mission thing you know figure out what you're gonna use it for you know and buy the right airplane maintenance this is another one I get a ton of questions on you know what are your annuals cost you know how much deferred maintenance do you have you know um, my annuals I'm gonna knock out the big ones like the ones that were thousands and thousands of dollars because those were gym induced annuals not um, not required my typical annual for the RV which is an annual right now incidentally and the Cessna are about 12 to 1500 bucks typically okay that's the annual part of it the deferred maintenance part of it is much different I uh, I never ever ever defer maintenance I you know if there's a squawk on the airplane I just have it fixed and that's my personality I can't help it it is what it is um, so you know there are two ways to maintain an airplane unfortunately the, the first is to you know defer all but the dangerous maintenance items or fix them all as soon as they happen and they will happen you'll buy a brand new airplane I did it I bought a brand new mall flying at home I had problems with the autopilot had to you know have it worked on as soon as I landed so airplanes are big complex things that fly through the air and they're gonna have problems and so you just you have to budget for them in terms of, of budget I typically um, would budget about hundred and twenty dollars per flight hour is if you fly 200 hours a year that's that's a really good number uh, for these types of airplanes Bonanza probably probably a little bit more the you know the cost of acquisition for an air, airplane is really de minimis when you think about all the money you're gonna put into it changing the oil um, AV fuel is is AV fuel is expensive and then the things that break you know you've got very complex instruments in these things and they they sputter out and die and you have to have them overhauled and and it costs money and so if you're not budgeting if, if, if you're not budgeting kind of a hundred ish an hour for maintenance you know your budgets wrong bottom line let's see uh, hangers hangers are you know a big part of, of flying I'm one of those people I'm never gonna tie my airplanes up outside I just it's not in me to do it, it goes back to the OCD um, but hangers are expensive uh, here in Colorado 
I have two tea hangers and they were about $65,000 a piece to, to purchase. Now the problem with purchasing hangers is you don't actually own the ground they sit on, the, the airport does. And so you have you know typically a 20 to 40 year land lease uh, with your hangar that you own sitting on top of it. Now banks don't like to finance those. So you have to be prepared if you're going to buy a hangar to you know come up with a good portion of it in cash to you know to to buy them now if you're going to rent uh here at uh, i'm at front range airport in in colorado kftg and it's going to cost you three to four hundred dollars a month to rent a tea hanger that's expensive you know uh especially if you have multiple airplanes and you know which hopefully you're smart enough not to make that mistake but if you're like me and have done that, then then you know your cost to entry is either going to be you know a couple hundred thousand dollars in or I'm sorry a hundred thousand dollars in hangers or you know three to nine hundred dollars a month in 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 hangar rent. So the other one I get pilot training. Uh, a lot of people ask me about pilot training, and I think that's cool because there's a lot of non-pilots that watch this channel, and and I just think that's awesome. That's why we do it, right? Um, I don't know what it costs to become a pilot these days. I know, you know, I was fortunate to have, um, you know, a pilot in the family who, who, you know, taught me a majority of, of, you know, way back then when I got my license, you know, how to fly. And so I, I knew how to fly long before I was able to even, you know, sit for the test. So, um, you know, I, I think 150 an hour is probably, a, uh, a decent number. Uh, I know that when I did my biannual flight review a couple months ago, uh, it was two hours and it was, you know, a couple hundred dollars. But we did it in my own plane. If you don't have your own plane, you're going to have to, you know, go rent one. That's a good eighty to hundred bucks an hour. So um, you can do the math. Uh, the minimum requirement is forty hours, uh, and you know, an equivalent amount of ground school time with an instructor and so it's going to be pricey but I can tell you you know it opens up the world uh, the adventures I've had in old planes and these planes have been epic and life-changing and and you know if you ever if you're ever thinking about you know should I become a pilot the answer is yes even if you don't ever use it you know it's a the things you learn just about meteorology the things you learn about mechanics, the things you learned about, learn about fluid dynamics, the things you learn about everything. It's really cool. And, you know, so I'm, I'm always good for a free airplane ride for, for people who want to, uh, who want to go up and, and we've done some really fun ones. So, um, there you have it. I hope that answers a lot of the questions. You know, it comes down to, you know, pilot training, mission, maintenance, the cost of the unknowns in and you know your hangar space and um, you know once you figure out those things and put a budget around them the rest is good all right well hopefully I answered your questions and uh, you know keep them coming and if you like this sort of thing like subscribe comment and until next time